Hi, my name is Jim Vanigan, and the title of today's program is Simple Wins the Day. And today I'm joined by Rehan Mirza, who is our technology partner, and he will be driving uh, the demo portion of today's presentation. Next slide. So our focus uh, today is on impactful initiatives that are quick and easy to execute, as well as simple to engage. Uh, I'd like to level set on program framework because it matters. And um, in particular, when I talk about framework, I'm talking about what's captured in your general consent language. So for many, your general consent language contains a HIPAA release only. And things like email, uh, electronic income verification, text, or even APON, these are optional fields uh, within your enrollment form. So my simple suggestion, number one for today, is that your general consent language wraps other authorizations such as text, email, and electronic income uh, verification uh, with your HIPAA release. For those attorneys in the audience, um, here's the thing, patients are not obligated to sign it. Uh, their failure to sign it will not in any way affect the relationship with their uh, provider, their prescription, or their insurance company. They just simply won't be uh, eligible for the program. I will tell you that there are a number of pharma companies that are doing that today. Uh, there are small, mid-size, and large. So if you elect to go in that direction, uh, you will be in good company. The next up will be uh, our demo. And I have mentioned that Ray, Rayhan will be handling that. This is a demo of our patient journey. And we're gonna demonstrate the interplay of our platform process and the patient. And while we're going through it, so you get a sense of context of how we're employing these simple solutions, you know, we will infuse those along the way and we'll speak to it. Uh, there are some recurring themes. Uh, you will see uh, in the campaigns and proactive initiatives for self-service, but the recurring theme is to answer questions uh, before they become calls. We do have a section for smart IVR, and uh, I think you'll uh, like that. Uh, our smart IVR is connected with our CRM, so we'll demo a patient calling in. It'll recognize that patient. There'll be a quick authentication. And then um, the, the IVR will provide sort of contextual input on the status of that patient's enrollment. And to the extent that there may be issues with that enrollment, uh, it'll enable that patient to visually resolve it. Uh, next slide, please. So what are we looking at here? This is a call disposition report, very colorful. You'll see bars by month. Uh, and this is for your typical patient assistance program. This does not incorporate the solutions that I'm talking about, but it gives you a sense of context. And what this report is telling us here is that literally three quarters of calls that are received by PAP programs either have something to do uh, with the application processing piece or prescription. And so if you look at these bars, the blue on the bottom, you'll see blue, gray, um, navy blue and something that looks almost like pink. Those all are disposition call types that are related to um, a patient's application status. The purple is prescription status. The green is refill. The others are miscellaneous practice calls. There's an appeal, general information. So why am I sharing this information with you? Well, depending on your patient mix, your program rules, or even your vendor selection, you're, you are fielding anywhere between five to nine calls uh, per enrollment. And when you think about the cost of a call, and it, and it varies, it depends on your patient mix, but at a minimum, you're running for volume programs at or around $8, really depending, but around $8 uh, per call. And if your patient mix skews heavily towards Medicare, uh, the average handle times are going to go up by as much as 50%. So this does represent a material cost. And so to the extent uh, that you're able to answer questions before they become calls, this elevates your program and it improves your patient experience. Uh, 
Next slide. So before we go into the demo phase, I'd like to introduce uh, to you our PAP applicant. His name is Art Muti. Uh, Art was diagnosed uh, with plaque psoriasis. He's been prescribed Comira, and he receives his prescription benefit through Medicare Part D. Now, just last week on Thursday, uh, Art swung by his doctor's office and dropped off his PAP application. And this morning, uh, the nurse for that practice uh, completed that form and faxed it in to us. So with that set up, let's go on to the next slide and I'd like to pass this off to Rayhan to get us started in the demo. Thank you, Jim. Good afternoon, everyone. So we're going to show you some key elements uh, from the technology perspective to streamline the application perspective, uh, application processing for Art Beauty. Uh, so what you see on the screen is uh, the visual that the agent would see when they start their day. So they are presented by these omni-channel uh, box, which provides real-time routing of cases that come in. In this case, we have received the enrollment from uh, from the HCP office for Art Muti. And as soon as they accept the inbound work item, they are present, uh, they, the system is going to digitize this information. So few things to call out here as far as uh, the solution is concerned. There's a key automation pieces that are in play. First off is the OCR capability. So OCR digitizes this and uh, provides uh, the information uh, to our agents to review uh, the inbound information and it's pre-populated in the predefined uh, forms that is. So what you see on the screen is the system has successfully onboarded patient art muti into the system um, uh, based on the OCR capability that we have, that, uh, that, that's there. And uh, key things to call out here is first off is the, the journey uh, that is depicted by these chevrons up top. So green depicts that that uh, stage gate has been completed. In this case, it's onboarding, and uh, which is essentially ingesting the information, the inbound uh, enrollment form from the HCP office for Art Muti, and creating a profile for that and uh, associate, associating it to the document that we received, and so on and so forth. You'll see there's multiple stage gates, and as soon as we process those and review those, uh, uh, those will be updated. Additionally, uh, we have the average accuracy rate depicted here as 100%. Now, we received the supporting document, which is on the right side uh, as a related list. So the document can be viewed as needed to f uh, further, um, you know, from the perspective of the agent, they can review it and make sure that everything checks out. However, the OCR has provided us the accuracy of the information that has been digitized. However, we uh, this information was typed, so therefore it's at 100%. We do have a threshold that we work with. So for the documents that are handwritten, and if they don't meet the threshold that is, and under the threshold, we do have uh, a work item created or an action created for our agents to further review it. On the right side, you will also see a next best action. That is, basically our system's ability to provide guidance to our agents to sift through the information. So it's the architecture is system driven rather than agent driven. So system is able to based on business rules and automation, we are able to guide the agent through the process. And as so, uh, you will see what next steps needs to happen. At this stage, since the order onboarding has been successful, we have also sent out an outreach via text to Art Muti. And what you'll see on the screen is Art Muti's mobile screen. And this is the message that has been pushed, uh, has been pushed out from, our, uh, from the system, that is. And it's calling out that we have received the message, uh, we have received your application, and uh, what are the next steps associated with that. And if they require further assistance, they can text the word status back to us, and we'll be able to provide most up-to-date information to them. Couple things I like to point out here. So, talk about the top four reasons, you know, why a patient might call in. And certainly, did you get my application would be among them. Remember that Art dropped off this application last Thursday. 
And it's easier to call us than to try to get a call back from his practice. And so, you know, that is call out number one. Uh, the other is uh, we provided some context in terms of where this is fitting in. Literally, it is sent out seconds from the time that we have ingested the document. So from an agent perspective, pretty simple. We had that automated work stream that created the patient case in the system and then automatically uh, this this text went out uh, to the patient. This could have been an email, and in many programs, it's, it can be combined, text and email, to see which one uh, that patient responds to. And then the last thing I want to point out is, you know, being able to text back a single word and get a status update isn't just specific to this enrollment uh, segment. This patient art could, three weeks from now, type back status and find out he's not going to hear about his enrollment because he would have already been either approved or denied. He'd hear about the status of his next shipment. So, you know, those are things that I'd just like to call out on simple suggestion number two. Back to you, Rehan. So we will move along to review this uh, application that we received through the OCR digitization. So really the system is asking for us to, uh, for the agent to review this information. So as depicted on the screen, this is the app screen. We have received the consent, uh, consent information and the uh, income details. However, the e-income consent is missing in this case. And uh, ART has not sent out, sent us the income document uh, for the application that is. So at this stage, we have actually triggered an outreach to ART uh, via text to notifying him that there is missing information. So remember my uh, suggestion, simple suggestion number one, get a consent that includes authorization for everything. This demo is not on that, is, is not that dynamic here. In this dynamic, the application form did have individual check boxes for things like you know, uh, electronic income verification. We did get the authorization for text and email, however, that was baked into the general uh, general consent language. So uh, for the setup for this demo, Art got this text, but he didn't open it. He didn't, he didn't read it. He, ha he has no idea that uh, he is missing uh, the income, income documentation. And by the way, he didn't check the box to allow us to do it electronically. So. Ordinarily, you know, uh, business rules would suggest don't move on till you get it. But in this demo, uh, we are going to allow the rules to permit us to proceed in processing arts application. And the reason for that is I'm going to show you how we solve for this uh, at the end with uh, smart IVR. Thank you, Rahan. Back to you. So we're going to move on uh, to further review the additional information as it relates to the uh, inbound enrollment that we received from the HCP office for ART. So in, in this case, you're seeing the prescription level details. So up top, we have the practitioner level details. If we hover down, we'll see that we have shipping address. Now shipping address, uh, there's real-time integration uh, that validates uh, the uh, address for correctness and as well as tell us whether it's a residential or a commercial address as well. As we move along, you'll see the practitioner licensing details. So in this case, we have received the NPI number. However, uh, we do have integrations that allows us to get to the DEA and state license, and it works the other way around as well. If you we are missing uh, the NPI, uh, we can get to the DEA and state license. And we populate it as needed, and we move on uh, to the product level details. So we have, uh, uh, we have the product level details populated. So everything checks out. We proceed to save this information since the agent has validated and everything checks out. And the next step is to review the insurance coverage. Okay. In the enrollment application, uh, Art did provide, and it was a requirement, that he provide his Part D uh, prescription benefit info. Uh, BIN, PCN group, member ID, payer name, that sort of thing. Uh, but you'll notice here on the screen uh, that in addition to the BART D plan, which is, is primary listed number one, we were able to uncover other information or other insurance information uh, for ART. Presum you know, 
their medical benefit. So we did an eligibility check against the pharmacy benefit, but uh, we also have the ability to do a uh, discovery on arts uh, medical, medical coverage. And so those connections are somewhat unique. Uh, we're able to get them because of the audit work we do for payers. So we'll audit claims paid by payers to determine if they were primary at the time that that patient uh, incurred that charge. And if not, we'll deny those charges. But in order to do that audit work for payers, uh, uh, we have connections that enable us to discover a patient, uh, whether or not a patient has insurance from other providers. So in, in this dynamic here, we perform two transactions. We discover that ART has uh, Medicare Basic and Medicare Advantage Plan N. Now, both those benefits uh, are not going to be helpful in covering ART's out-of-pocket costs under Part D, but we were able to surface a retiree insurance plan that ART's eligible for through a former employer. Now, generally, if you can find this, there's a high probability that that private insurance, that retiree insurance will wrap around uh, the Part D benefit. Uh, in, in this demo, however, we're gonna assume that it doesn't. So let's just pop into Part D to see what ART's costs are. So it turns out ART has a deductible, 395. Uh, first 30 day out of pocket is over 2000 and an estimated annual is almost $7,000. And there is legitimately no other insurance that ART has access to um, that will pay this down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on to the alternative coverage or alternative funding section. And so the call out on, on the previous slide for insurance was if you can get medical benefit uh, discovery, it's important not only for Part D products, or drugs covered under um, a pharmacy benefit, but obviously uh, for those covered under medical as well. So that is suggestion. Uh, where are we at? Three. Mm, yeah, three. We're at suggestion three. All right, so we're on alternative funding. So what happened in the background here is, and there's a separate work stream for alternative funding. You wanna make sure that your programs have that. And what's happening in the background or already happened was that the enrollment form for ART contained an ICD-10 code. And that, di and that translation to a diagnosis or disease was mapped to uh, the foundations in our backend system. So each foundation will cover specific disease categories and we uh, maintain a directory of those. And so in this case, ART matched up to two such uh, copay foundations. And you see listed a telephone number for each. So the agent is able to quickly reach out to that respective foundation. And of course the call is to determine whether or not that foundation presently uh, has funding available, is open in that disease category, and if so, then we'll look to communicate with ART uh, and to triage ART to that foundation. In many instances, it's really directing ART to reach out to that foundation and then a follow-up on the status. In this particular demo, we're gonna assume that funding is not available for either. Now, uh, one other point about copay foundations. If you're running a lot of volume and in the morning you find out that foundation has funding then we can trigger the system, you know, to alert uh, the agent, you know, that it is high probability that funding is still available and to reach out to that one if there are multiples. We also see low income subsidy further down and we see Medicaid. Um, both of them indicate that ART is ineligible. And the rationale for that is that ART provided income uh, not the documentation, but indicated what his annual income, family um, income was. And that translated to an FPL that was higher than the threshold for both low income subsidy and for Medicaid. But if it was within threshold, then we'd have additional work stream to establish if ART meets the other criteria of assets. And if so, we would help to coordinate with ART his enrollment into either low income subsidy or into uh, Medicaid. 
So remember, uh, not long ago, Art received a text regarding missing documentation for, for his income. We allowed it to pass. We went back to the general screen and we determined whether Art was eligible. Because the system is monitoring Art's feedback, they did, it didn't receive it. And so I'm going to pass it off to Rehan for him to complete the balance of this journey. Rehan? So as Jim mentioned, uh, and uh, we mentioned during the app, uh, application stage, Art received a message, but he never saw that message. So at this stage, Art is uh, concerned and wants to know about what, where the application is within the workflow. And uh, since he had never saw that message, he is looking to call into our IVR, smart IVR solution, and to understand and get the most up-to-date information from that end, that is. So I'm going to showcase you from Art's perspective when he calls in, what is the information that will be presented through our smart, smart IVR solution. So I'm going to go, go ahead and call. Demo mode. Thank you for calling the patient assistance program. We were able to locate you in the program based on the phone number you are calling from. Please enter your date of birth for verification. Your date of birth should be entered at a two-digit month. A two -digit the date of birth you entered is June 1st, 1956. August 11th, 2021. We notified you via text on August 16th, 2021. That copies of your financial documents were missing as of today. August 17th, 2021. We have not received your financial documents. If you would like, you can authorize us to perform an electronic income check that will not require you to send in financial documents and will not affect your credit score or credit rating. If you would like to authorize us to perform an electronic income check, please press 1. Otherwise, press 2. A text message was just sent to your phone on 5. It should arrive momentarily. Please use the link attached in the text to opt in for the electronic income check or upload copies of their financial documents. All right. So as you heard, Art uh, just selected the option to uh, get a text message uh, to provide further information that is missing to proceed uh, with, for us to proceed with processing the application. So what you see on the screen right now is uh, Art's mobile screen and he has received a message calling out uh, the instructions on how to proceed further. So in order to get to uh, what, what is needed, he is requested to click on the link. And what is presented is two options. The first option is really to uh, consent to e-income verification. The second option is to actually upload the income documentation, that is. So for the purpose of the demo, we're going to go with second option, and in this case, uh, Art has selected uh, 1099 and he has that document in front of him. So uh, this the system allows Art to take a picture right there. And as you can see, Art is taking a picture and uh, for the proof of income. And as soon as he does that, that gets updated. And once it's updated within the platform, we're going to transition over to the agent screen uh, to showcase you what we have received based on this input from Art. So as soon as uh, Art completes the step, uh, we hover over back to the agent screen to showcase you a few elements that has been updated based on the information that Art provided us. First off, the proof of income has been checked based on the ingestion of this information. And we also have received the 
document that we were looking for to further proceed with determining uh, completing the application. So as you can see, this has been associated with uh, the profile of art and it's available for the agent to review. At this stage, it an agent has reviewed everything and the final, final process step is to determine the overall outcome of the application. Since we have received everything to proceed further, we're going to go ahead and the system is going to do another check at this point to process. And as you can see, once we did the overall outcome, the application is approved. And the next step is to provide this information over to the fulfillment partner to further process and uh, proceed to fulfill the order that is. So as soon as we create the order, that information is relayed over to our fulfillment partner. And one key element has happened here. Uh, we have sent out a text message, uh, an outreach to Art, notifying him that the application has been approved and providing him instructions on what to expect next uh, based on the approval that is. So what you see on the screen right now is the application details screen where the application right now uh, at some was pending, but we are going to show you we, what you see right now is that the application uh, is uh, the order has been shipped and there's a tracking number available. So that is something that we'll receive uh, at some point in time. Uh, however, for the purpose of the demo, we're showing you how that information comes in and moving over to Art's mobile screen, you'll see two messages. First off, as I mentioned, an approval uh, message was sent out as soon as we created the order. And once this approval message was sent out, as soon as we received that information from our fulfillment partner, as far as the tracking information is concerned, another message was triggered from our system proactively to provide the details on the tracking uh, information. So as we click on the link that was provided within the tracking information, it redirects to the carrier. In this case, it's FedEx. And as you can see, the order has been delivered to Art. Great. Well, uh, let's move over on to the slide deck Jim, again. So a recap. 75% of calls that come in are for either your Rx or for status on uh, your application. And we demonstrated a few things. We demonstrated outreach, proactive outreach by a text and email that we received Art's application because I know he was wondering if we ever got it. We also reached out though we didn't see that uh, Art was missing documentation and then we confirmed that art was approved and shortly thereafter confirmed fulfillment of art shipment along with a tracking number. All those status updates allowed for art to text back status. So whatever question art may have had at that time, you know, we can give the most current status. So if it, if art's application had already been approved and art type back status, it would generally be a status on either the expiration of arts enrollment or on the status of the next shipment or whether or not art is required to authorize a refill. We demoed the smart IVR. We did it for a missing information pursuit. In this case, it was a complicated one because we needed copies of arts uh, income documentation but could have easily done it for you know, a consent that was missing or for other information um, that was required, but either was not readable or uh, yeah, was not provided in the enrollment. Let's see, what else are we getting here? So in this slide, we say interactive text check. Some of the text did allow for art to interact with our backend service. So that is a proactive way through a campaign uh, to push self-service. Uh, the alternative, of course, is portal, and, and we think that this is a, a better approach to that. Next slide, please. So with the smart IVR, some things to remember about this. One, in order for it to work, it needs to be integrated uh, into the back end of your CRM. Uh, and, and when that happens, it can provide uh, contextually relevant information. So think about uh, your, your um, let's say, uh, what's a good one? Why am I blanking here? Ah, 
uh, your internet goes down. So you call your internet provider and they can tell based on your telephone number whether or not there's service in your area. So if you're just calling to report that you lost your internet, that, that's just a great tool. So in this dynamic, when a patient does call in, we're gonna give some of the basic status updates. We may not need to provide all the information on dates and other such things to keep patients on the line too long, but we can make it quick uh, to resolve any questions that may be outstanding. But the important thing about IVR, in our, in our opinion, is to enable the patient at any time to speak with an agent, but to give them that information that they likely are calling about you know, up front. Status updates uh, before options, confirmation or response uh, to text, any of these engagement, there, there needs to be reporting on so that you know, we can gauge what, uh, what the uptake of it is and what the outcome is. So it's an important part of your reporting for you to capture any of these engagements um, when patients do click on the attachments or contact the smart IVR. Does it result in an agent being connected with or does it resolve the issue? So we think that is also important when you execute against smart IVR. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much for, for taking the time today and sharing uh, your service and your insights with us today. Uh, that will conclude the session, but I do encourage all attendee members to reach out to the content team if you have any additional questions. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you.